Right now, though, let's continue our walkthrough of this standard sprinkler installation. Plastic or copper pipe is used in unfinished basements like this one. The contractor chose copper for this system. In the finished spaces throughout the rest of the house, plastic chloropolyvinyl chloride, or CPVC pipe, can be used. With CPVC, a special glue secures the connections, so there are no more sweating copper joints or threading steel pipe problems. Plastic pipe has really simplified installation and made sprinkler systems much more cost effective. In multi-purpose systems, those where the sprinklers and cold water fixtures are fed with the same pipes, Another type of non-metallic pipe called PEX is also approved for use. In this house, seven pendant fire sprinklers provide coverage for the entire basement, and that's typical. Now let's move upstairs. We have the one inch CPVC riser passing through an interior wall going up to the first and second floor. Now here on the first floor, the sprinklers will be concealed in the ceiling. Let's go back to the other house to see how they'll look in a finished home. Now here at the finished house, you can see how well the sprinkler cover plate blends into the ceiling. It's smaller than a smoke alarm and less obvious than a light fixture. Now if there's a fire, that heat sensitive plate just drops away. Each installed sprinkler covers an area at least 12 by 12 feet. Now this house has extended coverage sprinklers and they cover up to 20 by 20 feet. That's a total of 400 square feet. This entire first floor is protected by 11 sprinklers. Now, let's go upstairs. A single sprinkler will protect an average size bedroom. Now, this entire second floor is covered by 15 of these sidewall sprinklers. These wall-mounted sprinklers are used to avoid placing pipes in the unfinished attic. And that's important in this house because we're in the Midwest, where freezing is a concern. In homes with finished attics, or in regions where freezing is not a concern, Concealed ceiling sprinklers can be mounted with pipes going through the attic. If you need to install ceiling mounted sprinklers in attics that are subject to freezing, the pipes must be insulated. NFPA 13D provides guidance on insulation and freeze protection. For standalone systems, NFPA 13D provides for the option to use antifreeze. In these situations, two additional things are important proper backflow protection, and ongoing maintenance of the antifreeze solution. In general, fire sprinkler systems require very little maintenance. The sprinklers themselves require none at all. The most important thing is to make sure that the flow switch and water flow alarms remain operable. The system should be tested every year. Testing can be easily done by the homeowner or the sprinkler contractor. Fire sprinkler systems can be roughed in any time after plumbing and HVAC installation and trimmed at the same time other contractors are working. Remember, communication and cooperation are the keys to a smooth installation. We work very closely to coordinate with the other contractors, the plumber, the HVAC contractor, the electrician, the fact that we have to rough our systems in in the walls before the drywall goes up. We work closely with the builder to ensure that we deliver a functioning and complete fire sprinkler system in his time frame. The most important thing you as a builder or developer can do is choose a qualified specialist for sprinkler installation. NFPA 13D mandates that fire sprinkler installations should be made only by people knowledgeable and trained in such systems. The fire sprinkler specialist will design an effective and efficient system specifically for the houses you build. There are a wide variety of sprinkler designs available to address the particular needs of your homes. Pitch ceilings, open construction, unusual configurations. Your contractor will offer you design flexibility and adaptability for any style home. The first step a qualified contractor will take is to prepare shop drawings and hydraulic calculations to make sure the system performance will comply with the minimum code requirements. These documents are normally submitted for approval during the permit process. A good contractor can be an important asset in your dealings with fire and water authorities. And remember, it's important to develop this cooperation early on. The payoff for you can be a reduction in land development and construction costs and a smoother process. When a developer comes in and wants to put sprinklers in a home, we'll do absolutely everything we can to make that cost effective for the developer. Some of the things that we can do is give you credits for fire flow, for fire hydrant placement, 
we can be creative with our access requirements and sometimes we can even help you get a, a increased density for the development you want to do. Customary trade-up options vary, but they can include street width reduction, lowering the amount of pavement per linear foot of street, longer dead-end streets, and the permitted use of T-turnarounds. Increased street grades and building setbacks, additional units with increases up to 20% not uncommon, elimination of the need to expand water supply, and increased hydrant spacing. According to the Reese Carr Report from Scottsdale, Arizona, the final cost of sprinklers taking into account the savings from trade-ups was less than $200 per unit. Many communities also offer building code alternatives that might include a reduction in fire rated wallboard requirements or reduced fire rating standards for masonry walls and doors. The point is your residential sprinkler costs can be substantially offset or reduced. Your bottom line won't suffer. Another sprinkler benefit your sales force can pass along to your customers is long-term cost savings. The, uh, the first and most important benefit is the life safety. Uh, they'll be able to get out of the house safely. Um, the second benefit, which is important to all customers today, is to keep their costs down and they'll be uh, uh, given discounts that will be able to reduce their premiums. My insurance company's already given me a discount for having the system, so I feel good. I hope this program has helped answer your questions about home fire sprinklers. We've given you the facts and dispelled some of the myths. Unless you're looking for them, you don't notice them. Matter of fact, we've had people here and we've talked about having a sprinkler system and they can't tell where it is. You have a roof, why wouldn't you have a sprinkler system? You're putting in windows, why don't you put in a sprinkler system? You have a floor, why wouldn't you put in a sprinkler system? In other words, it is such a an integral part of a, of a solid, safe structure, you can hardly do without it. Here's a recap of the key points to remember about home fire sprinklers. First, follow the requirements of the National Consensus Standard published by the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA 13D. Second, choose a qualified contractor experienced with residential fire sprinkler systems. Third, work with local fire officials before beginning the project to establish all requirements and discuss trade-ups. Fourth, work with local water officials to ensure proper water tap and meter sizes. The Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition website is your resource for information on residential fire sprinklers. Go to www.homefiresprinkler.org and click on Building Professionals. Your customers want the protection fire sprinklers afford. You can provide them with greater safety and higher home value, all the while doing good for your community and well for yourself. Install home fire sprinklers in the homes you build and save lives one family at a time. Thank you for watching.